I mean, if it was even a debate, which in my opinion, it probably shouldn't have been, it has to be clear in everyone's minds now. Vinny Jr. will win the Ballon d'Or next Monday, and he is a fully, fully, fully deserving winner at that. Now look, I understand the Ballon d'Or is based on, on a season-by-season -season basis. Therefore, this game doesn't even actually impact the outcome of next week's Ballon d'Or. But if you wanted an idea, a game to summarize what kind of sensational talent, what kind of brilliant entertainer, and what kind of absolutely excellent footballer Vinicius Jr. is. Today's game against Borussia Dortmund was the perfect encapsulation of such men. Real Madrid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me say this, yeah. I made myself a promise and I told my viewers on, on Twitch and my, my viewers on YouTube and all my uh, people on Twitter, I was going to stay away from being critical about Real Madrid until the first Clasico. Now, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it at the time of recording, Real Madrid played Barcelona at the weekend. So we're going to be doing a watch along on my Twitch. I'll be reacting to it uh, after the game on YouTube. But I've held off on being too overly critical about Madrid and their start to the season because I looked at the team's makeup and I looked at the inclusion, the incoming of Kylian Mbappe. I looked at the departure of Tony Kroos and I looked at the, the rest of the window that they had. And I thought to myself, yeah, it's going to take, it's going to take some time for Real Madrid to gel and for them to, to get shit together. And I think they deserve the benefit of the doubt for a certain amount of time because they got credit in the bank. They're the European champions. They have an unbelievable manager at the helm. They have unbelievable players at their disposal. They have champions at their disposal. And they deserve the benefit of the doubt for the first few months of the season to get their shit together. I'm not going to judge them right from the jump. Because Madrid as well too, we know they're a team that likes to grow into the season. We know that they come alive in the closing weeks of La Liga. They come alive in the closing rounds of the Champions League. And that's really where Real Madrid becomes the club that we know. And as we've seen today, they're also a club that comes alive in the closing moments of games. They, they just know when to get it done. However, this has been a poor start to the season for Real Madrid. Let's not get it twisted. I know they only have one loss in all competitions, I believe, which came, of course, to Lille in the Champions League a few weeks ago. But let's be real. We all watch football. We all know what we're watching. It hasn't been convincing by, from Real Madrid. I think they've massively missed the calming presence and the dictating role uh, in possession of a Toni Kroos. I don't think there was a replacement at the helm. And I think his retirement last season probably wasn't really planned on when you talk about Real Madrid's viewpoint into the transfer window. I don't think they were really planning on replacing Toni Kroos. So I think that definitely caught them off guard. And I think they've massively missed him. That on top of the fact that this diamond system in which Vinicius and Rodrigo played up front in a perfect synergy together in front of Jude Bellingham, who was just slightly behind them. And he hit this unbelievable vein of form, especially at the start of the season where he would seem like he was scoring every single week. But throughout the season, he was so, so good in that advanced midfield role. And then the midfield balance of the tenacity of Fede, the ball winning of Chuameni, uh, the, the metronomic style of Toni Kroos. It was just a perfect formula. Everything worked perfectly for Real Madrid last year. And of course, losing Toni Kroos and bringing in Kylian Mbappe, that's going to change the dynamic massively. And it has. It absolutely has. Uh, the start of the season hasn't been great. The first half of today for me was horrible at times, honestly. And it's been like that a few games for Madrid. Now they have players that can get them out of situations when it's not going well. That's the story of Real Madrid. And they haven't kind of been hurt by their poor start of the season as much as most teams would, right? Even when they play bad, they got players that can dig them out of holes. You look at the weekend, you look at today. But I've always said, for me, the first Clásico, which is going to mark about what, August, September, October, almost November, three to four months of the season will have passed. What Real Madrid are we looking at? So we'll, we'll wait to see on Sunday. But if we just talk about this game a little bit, it's a tale of two halves, honestly. I mean, the, this, the first half, Real Madrid created some chances, right? Like Jude Bellingham missed a, a wide open header that last season, I'm actually convinced he would have scored. But th this, this go around, he heads it directly into the keeper's hands. And then there was a sequence where Rudiger plays a ball over the top to Rodrigo, who expertly volleys it off the crossbar and then it falls to Jude who his attempt goes off the crossbar again and then Mbappe passes it out to I think it was was it Modric who, who forces a save from the keeper I can't remember who exactly it was so it's not like Madrid didn't create chances it's not like Madrid were locked out of the game but you look at this team defensively right and for all I've talked about cross and for all I've talked about Mbappe defensively I think is probably one of the biggest red flags about this team this season man honestly 
they've looked so vulnerable so many times this year. I think the injury to Carvajal is a massive one because Lucas Vazquez, although he scores one of the three goals to win Real Madrid the game, he's, his fingerprints are on both goals that, that Real Madrid conceded as well too. I mean, I think Real Madrid are really going to struggle this season if Lucas Vazquez is their, their right back for every single game of the remainder of the season. I, I think genuinely they need to go into the window in January because Lucas Vazquez is just not it. I mean, I think at times in the past he could do a makeshift roll out there, but... Wow. And then you look at Ferlo Mendy on the other side. Now, Mendy is a player that throughout his Real Madrid career, he's had ups, he's had downs. But I looked at last season in particular and I thought, this is a turning point for, for Mendy. I thought I thought he had a really good campaign last year. But this season, again, you look at him and I'm sorry, I might sound harsh here and maybe Madrid fans who watch him more will disagree. But I don't think this is a left back to the standard of Real Madrid. I think when you look at the rest of this team, he's the odd man out when everyone is fit. Like right now, it's obviously Vasquez, but when everyone is fit, Mendy's the odd man out. And I, I just look at that fullback partnership, that fullback pairing, mixed with Militao who's come back from injury and he's looked okay. I'm a big fan of Militao, but I don't think he's looked at his absolute best that he hit uh, a few seasons ago. Rudiger, I don't think has been as good as he was last year, although he's still at a good level. Last year, I thought he was arguably the best in the world. I think the midfield defensively as well too, it has looked quite open at times. And then you look going forward as well too, I just don't think there's much cohesiveness in that attack. And it's normal, right? Because in Mbappe, he's not an out and out number nine. He isn't. He's a player that can play centrally, yes, but he's a player that wants to face the goal. He's a player that wants to run in behind, be on the last line of defenses, run at players. He's not a player that wants to hold up the ball and get others involved. That's not his game. That's never been his game and it probably never will be his game. He likes to also drift out on the left, which is where Vinicius obviously does his best work. And even last season, Rodrigo found himself drifting out there quite a bit. And at the end of the day, you've looked at the first few months of this Real Madrid season. I think it's slowly getting better. But there's games where you got eight players on the left-hand side. And then like Carvajal or now Vazquez and Fede, they're on the right. Everybody else is on the left. There's no balance. There's no, <laughs> you can't, you can't function as a football team like that, no matter how many good players you have. But yeah, man, I think they're slowly figuring out it's getting better. I'm not, I'm not here to say it's there yet. Like if the Champions League final was played tomorrow and Real Madrid were in it, boy, I, I, I wouldn't worry for them too much because they're Real Madrid and what team is better equipped to play finals than them. But still like just to kind of, my, my point is they're not where they want to be. Like where they want to be in May, they are nowhere near it right now. But again, like I said, when you have players of the likes of Vinicius Jr., sometimes it doesn't even matter. Damn it, guys. Sometimes it doesn't matter when you have a guy like Vinicius Jr. I just watched um, CBS's coverage of the game, right? And Jamie Carragher said uh, the, this line. He repeated it a few times, right? I think he's trying to, he's trying to go big on, on socials. He said, um, Real Madrid bought Kylian Mbappe thinking they were bringing in the best player in the world, but they already had him at home. In Vinicius Jr. And it had me thinking, right? Because if you guys know me and you guys have been following me for a long time, I've been of the opinion that maybe even since 2021, I think Kylian Mbappe has been the best player in the world. I think, look, PSG weren't winning Champions Leagues. France lost the World Cup final. But I just looked at his individual level for both club and country in the 2019-20 season, or sorry, the 2020-21 season, the 21-22 season, the World Cup in 2022. I was just looking at what Mbappe was doing at club and country. And he was hitting this level that I didn't see anybody on the planet at that time replicating. Like Messi had an unbelievable World Cup, but I think club-wise wasn't at his dazzling best. Benzema obviously had that amazing season, but like we all remember that Champions League tie between Real Madrid and PSG. And I know Benzema scores the hat-trick, but Mbappe scored two goals in that, in that tie as well too. And he had a few that were ruled out for offside. He had Madrid fans sweating, let's be real, before Benzema pulled off that remarkable comeback. And then you look at what he did at the World Cup. Like, this just seemed for me like the next best player in the world. You kind of saw the Messi and Ronaldo era was coming to an end. Mbappe is the one that's going to hold the mantle. And I even said at one point, I think he's taking the mantle of Mr. Champions League that Cristiano Ronaldo basically put at everyone's feet and said, who wants to take it off me? I thought Mbappe was getting to that level. But... A, I've been of the opinion that since the 2022 World Cup, something has changed in Mbappe. And I'm not going to speak too much on it now because, again, I'm biding my time. I'm waiting to see more Madrid games. I'm waiting to see, can he fit more into this Madrid team and we can see the real Kylian Mbappe. But if I'm being absolutely honest here, since the 2022 World Cup, yes, he scored a lot of goals. He scored a lot of goals last season. I still think he scored a decent amount this year, even though a lot of them are penalties. But I don't get the same feeling watching Kylian Mbappe that I did 2022 World Cup and before. We've looked at Erling Haaland and his goal scoring feats are phenomenal. They're all time great. And as a center forward, he's probably the best on the planet. But is he the best footballer? I've always questioned that. And I still question that, even though he's in the conversation. And then I look at this kid Vinicius, right? And is he a kid? Probably not anymore. But he's, yeah, I still consider him a kid because the fact is, I still think of that wide eyed, raw, maybe innocent guy that came to Real Madrid in what was it, 2018 from Flamengo that lost the ball all the time 
that Benzema literally made social media memes of telling Mendy, don't pass him the ball because he's playing against us. His his uh, arrival ceremony for Real Madrid where he was trying to like do juggles and, and rainbow flicks and they were failing. And I, I look at that guy that came to Real Madrid in 2018 as a boy. And I look at him now, six years later, as in my opinion, arguably the best player on the planet, a week away from winning the Ballon d'Or. It's absolutely remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. And in Mbappe and Haaland, right? These are two players that we saw from the start of their careers. Haaland at, at Molda, then Salzburg, then Dortmund, then uh, now at City, obviously, and for the Norwegian national team. From the word go, from the word jump, he has been someone we all can see is a phenomenal talent. One of the greatest goal scorers already that we've probably ever seen. Similar with Kylian Mbappe, from the word go of Monaco to then the 2018 World Cup as a teenager, equaling a record that Pele had set years ago, to then what he did at PSG and then the 2022 World Cup, we knew from the jump, Mbappe, this kid's the real deal. But with Vinicius, I don't think anybody in their wildest dreams could have believed that this was a guy that was one day going to win a Ballon d'Or before both of those guys. That was one day going to be deemed the best player on the planet. That was one day going to be a player that every single time the big Champions League games come around, he is the one deciding them. And so I go back to, to what I thought Mbappe was going to take the mantle off Cristiano Ronaldo for Mr. Champions League. I'm sorry, he might have tried it on, but the crown wasn't fitting. The crown fits Vinny. Vinny is the king of the Champions League at the moment. For the last two, three seasons, he has been Mr. Champions League. And um, I was very hesitant last season to say, yeah, Vinny for me is definitely the best player in the world. Like, yeah, the best year. For me, since that, that final, I would have given him the Ballon d'Or. But in terms of the, the best player in the world doesn't always win the Ballon d'Or. And I was still kind of holding on to Mbappe being the best, especially since we were about to see Mbappe play with Vinicius. So it was like, I don't want to call Vinicius better than Mbappe until I see them play together. And what, if Mbappe comes to Real Madrid and scores 50 goals on Vinicius' team, I'll look like an idiot. And again, it's early days and we still have to wait and see because Vinicius has been on this team. But the fact is, this is Vinicius' team. Thierry Henry said that when Mbappe joined Real Madrid, like, yes, he's a phenomenal player, maybe the best in the world, but don't be mistaken about whose team this actually is. It is Vinicius Jr.'s team. This team does go where Vinicius Jr. takes them. Similar to when the original Galacticos came with uh, R9, Zidane, Figo. Don't get it twisted. It's still Raul's team. I feel the same way about Vinicius. And look, man, um, I, I think the one blemish on his, his resume at the moment is his record for Brazil, which is so puzzling to me, right? Because when you think of international football, you, you often think of individuals and you often think of players that can take over games by themselves and like moments of madness. That's really what Vinicius encapsulates. Like he is arguably the ultimate X Factor player. So why is it so difficult when he goes to the Brazilian national team? Some will say, okay, Brazil is a mess right now, but still, he's one, he's for me the best player in the world. I'd expect a higher level of performance. But if you kind of remove that from the uh, the equation, we just look at his time as a Real Madrid player. I think he is the best player in the world. I I, I think he is. And of course, that's nothing to, to take away from the likes of Mbappe, from the likes of Haaland, from the likes of Yamal, who's emerging on the scene at the moment. I think De Bruyne is still, even at his age, unbelievable. I think Rodri is, if he were to win it, I wouldn't have any question marks. I think he's the best defensive midfielder in the world. I think he's arguably City's most important player. But in terms of just match winners, that you can just give them the ball. And in a flash, the game changes because of a moment of magic from Vinicius. I think he's that guy. I think he's that guy. I think he's a worthy winner on Monday. And I can't believe that there's been so many people on social media, which I know it's social media, right? Take over a grain of salt. But I cannot believe how many people genuinely think Vinicius should be nowhere near a Ballon d'Or. Like the level of talent that we're watching right now, the level of production, the level of wow, and the level of X factor, it's it's off the charts, man. I don't think there's anybody on the planet giving you it as consistently as, as Vinicius. And let me tell you the thing I love the most about Vinicius because there's a lot to like about him. First of all, if you like stats, he's a he's a productive player. He's usually good for 20 goals plus and 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 15 assists. He's he's a very productive player. He has been for the last three seasons, and I'm sure he's going to be this year as well too. If you like wow, if you like skills, if you like flair, if you like excitement, entertainment, he's that guy. Are you kidding me? For me, he's like a, ro a lost relic of the past. When you look at this, this this age where players are judged on efficiency and just being simple and fitting into a system, Vinicius is like an ode to the Neymars, an ode to the Ronaldinho's. Not saying he's as good as them, but he's one of the few players you see today that gets on the ball and just wants to put on a show. He wants to just humiliate his fullback. He'll do rainbow flicks. He'll, he'll skill his, his fullback up. He has an eye for the extraordinary. So that's another thing to like about him. But me personally, my favorite thing about Vinicius, and I think you see it on a night-to-night -night basis, you saw it tonight. I think he's the most relentless player on the planet. And he's one of the most relentless players I've ever seen. This guy plays at 100 miles an hour. Honestly, it's just, tw it's, it's literally every single time he gets the ball, his first thought in his mind is just to look his fullback dead in the eyes 
and rip him apart. Go forward, look at the goal and go to goal. I can't think of many players I've seen in my life that every single time they get the ball, the first thought is just go forward, go forward, go forward. And I, I just think as a fullback, right? Because whenever I think of wingers in particular, or just attackers in general, I always try and like think, okay, first of all, how good are they? But also if I was a defender, how badly would I not want to play against them? That's why I look at a Howland, right? If I was a center back, I'd be like, yo, get that guy away from me, bro. Honestly, physically, if it's, if it's a physical matchup, if it's like a straight sprint, he's going to batter me. But I look at a Vinicius, if I'm a fullback, just, just honestly, think of yourself if you are Ryerson today. I'm sorry, if I look at Vinicius on, uh, facing uh, uh, my direction at the start of a game, before a ball is kicked, I'm shitting myself. I am. Because you know every single time he gets the ball, he's not going to give you a moment to breathe. A fullback's dream is when the full winger gets the ball and like his first thought is go back to your, 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 your fullback. Or let's cut inside and maybe pass it to my center midfielder. The last thing a fullback wants to do is have to basically be backpedaling against you 90 times a game. And obviously 90 is an exaggeration, right? But it feels that way with Vinicius. It feels like every single time he gets the ball, and he gets the ball a lot because he's always demanding it. Another thing that I really like about him. It feels like every time he gets the ball, he just wants to run at his defender. It's relentless. It's this constant directness over 90 minutes, week in, week out. That's another thing too. And again, why I love Vinny, you can't accuse him of having a quiet game. You can accuse him of having a bad game. But you can never accuse him of going missing or, wow, I didn't even know Vinny, Vinny was playing. Has anybody ever said that about Vinicius Jr.? Because even if he has a bad game, it's like I said about Garnacho. Obviously, Vinicius is 50,000 times better. But it's a similar trait in terms of they have short memory. Even if they have a bad game, they lose the ball five times. Their shot gets deflected five times. That doesn't stop them from wanting to take that sixth shot. That doesn't discourage them from wanting to go at their fullback a sixth time. And I absolutely love that about Vinicius Jr. So for me, I think he's the most exciting player to watch on the planet alongside Lamin Yamal at the moment. And I think, yes, I, it's the first time I'm saying this since Mbappe for me became, in my opinion, the best player in the world. But I think Vinicius is right now. And I would say for the last year, I think he's been the best player in the world. I think he has. I'd, I'd love for him to eventually take that over to the international stage because look, football is a better environment when Brazil is at the top. And as the best player in the world, I, that is a Brazilian. I, w I would hope that he can kind of be a huge part in bringing Brazil back to where they should be. But yeah, I think he's I think he's the best player in the world. Now, on to Barca for Real Madrid. I do worry for them. Even though it is a big game, it is at the Bernabeu, and form goes out the window in this kind of derby. But I look at the way Barca are playing. Barca are arguably the, the, the hottest team in Europe at the moment. Hansi Flick has these boys firing. And we're going to watch, by the way, if you guys are watching this tonight, check me out on Twitch tomorrow, Lies Buzidi on Twitch. We're going to be doing a watch along for Barcelona versus Bayern Munich. Uh, Hansi Flick and Lewandowski returning to their former club. But Bayern Munich, Hansi Flick has these guys playing at a, at a level that very few on the planet are kind of hitting at the moment. Yamal is, is sensational. Lewandowski is returning to his goal scoring best. Gavi is back. Pedri is exhilarating. They're, they're a brilliant team and they are going to give Real Madrid such a difficult game. We'll be doing a watch along for that one as well too. But for me... That second half that we saw from Real Madrid has to be the catapult, the, the springboard for the rest of their season. It has to be the springboard into Sunday, which that has to be the ultimate change in fortune. Like their season starts on Sunday, Real Madrid. A big win in the, in the, in the Clasico against FC Barcelona at the Bernabeu. That kickstarts their season and everything that's happened before then is a distant memory. But they have to win and they have to do it in style because we know of Real Madrid, it's not enough to just win. You got to do it in Galactico style. And if one man is going to do that, it's Vinicius Jr. So, yo, absolutely brilliant.